welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Romans chapter 7. And I'm really excited to talk about this. When we actually read this chapter, um, it actually affirms what or reiterates what we just talked about um, in recently in Romans. And that's the fact that one of the things that Paul writes is, I wouldn't know covetousness. Um, right here in verse 7, he said, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, for I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. So we're talking about this, right? How the law was there to reveal to us, man, we are sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. Now, but Paul makes the point, it's like, well, the law isn't, the law isn't sin. Like, does that make sense? Like, that's not what, like, that's not what's producing sin in us. It's our sinful nature and desires that, that, that is sin. Does that make sense? All the law does is it shines a light on saying, hey, this is wrong. And then our flesh, our sinful desire is, yeah, I want to do what's wrong. And we see this internal struggle that Paul um, shows us. And it's it's so good because I think it's something that we can all relate to. We can all relate to kind of this internal struggle that Paul has. And we're going to talk a little bit about it today. But before we continue, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified when we post a new video, which is every day, Monday through Saturday. Amen. So every single day, you guys are getting... Um, what I believe, what we believe is really good content. Also, our Wednesday services and our Sunday services and soon our Sozo services, our youth group, uh, will be online so you guys can just watch um, a bunch of stuff from our, from our channel, our church. Amen. So, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you will be speaking to us today through your Holy Spirit, God. I thank you that we will find our hope in Jesus today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, we're going to pick up right here in, in verse 15. All right, Romans chapter 7, verse 15 says this. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, what I want to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Verse 16, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with, I, I, there, sorry, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, nothing good dwells. So he's saying, in me, nothing good dwells. But there, there's, a, there's a parenthesis there that, that says, in my flesh. In my flesh, nothing good dwells. And so this is this internal struggle that Paul has with this law. It's like, I know what's right to do. But my flesh, my sinful nature, doesn't want to do what is right. Even though, and, and I'm sure we've all been, I have certainly been in this situation. And I think every single one of us, we've been in the situation where you know what you're about to do is wrong. Whether it's something you're going to do, something you're going to say. Maybe you're, you're driving, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's at work, maybe it's with a certain family member, maybe it's with your spouse. Like, you know, man, what am I, what am I, what am I, what I'm about to say, the attitude I'm going to give, whatever it is, you're like, man, this is not good. And then you do it anyway, even though you're like, man, I know it's wrong. I know, I, I know this isn't what Jesus would do. That, so Paul is saying, listen, that is sin in you. That is your flesh. And so Paul's making this distinction between the, the sinful man and then the righteous man, which is who you are. Your true identity is in the Spirit of God, not in, not in your flesh. Amen? So, so in verse, seven, uh, so verse 17, But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. It means like there's, there, there's a part of me, I want to do what's right. But there's nothing in me that gives me the strength or the will or the power to overcome the sin. In other words, I'm in bondage to this. Even though I don't want to do it, my, my, it's like my flesh takes over and then I do what I don't want to do. Can you relate to Paul this, uh, today? 
Verse 19, for the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Verse 20, now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Now, I, 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 love, I, I love this verse. I'm actually, I'm going to have my iPad here. I'm going to highlight it. <laughs> now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells in me. This right here is really good. And I would, I would even venture to say this is so much better than when we read it. Or so much better than, yeah, it's, because here's what it's saying. Here's what Paul's saying. He's saying, the fact that there's something that you're going to do, or there's something that you do, that you're, maybe about to do and you don't want to do it but you end up doing it anyway that struggle shows that it's not you it shows that it will sin in you let me give you an, an example let's just say let's just say how do I say it? let's just say let's just say your spouse did something and you get really upset at them and you say something mean to them. You say something mean to them. And then about 10 minutes later, you're like, oh man, why did I say that? I should not have said it. I, and sometimes in the moment you're like, man, sometimes in the moment you're like, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. And then you say something mean, right? I think we've all been there where you're like, in the moment you're like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then you do it, you're like, oh, why did I do it? So Paul is, Paul is showing this. He's like, the fact that you can look at something you did and say, man, I didn't want to do that. Paul is saying, that's because it's not you. The fact that you can look at something and say, I don't want that to be me. That will for you to not want to do sin like that. That's you. And then sin is something, it, it's, it's, not, it's not you. Does that make sense? So here's what, so let me give you an example. Like, let's say you're like, man, I, I don't know why I'm angry all the time. I don't like being angry. Or I don't know why I'm so sad. All, I don't want to be sad. The fact that you recognize it's something that you don't want to do shows you that it's not you. Because if that's, if, if you were just, if you were an angry person and that's who you were, you wouldn't be able to look at yourself and say, I don't want to be this way. Does that make sense? The fact that you can look at yourself and say, I don't like this about myself. I don't want to be an angry person shows you that it's not you who wants to be an angry person, but it's sin. It's the flesh that dwells in you. That is the anger part of you. But the fact that you can look at sin in your life and say, I don't want to do that anymore shows us that separation between who you are and then your flesh and your sin. Does that make sense? Um, so that's so that's what Paul's saying. It's so powerful because it separates you. So if you're feeling anxious or depression, like man, I don't want to feel this way. Good, you're recognizing something in your life that's not you, and the fact that you can see and recognize and say, man, I don't want to be that way, according to Paul, shows you you don't want that. That means that's not who you are. So. Verse. Uh, let's jump down to. Well, let's just keep reading. Um, so verse 20, now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 21, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. Um, verse 22, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of, of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of the law of sin, which is in my members. So right here it says, for I delight, verse 22, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. In other words, like in, in my heart of hearts, I don't want to sin, but my members, my flesh want to sin. And so I am at war against myself between doing what I want to do and then not doing what I don't want to do. It is, so Paul said, there's this war inside of me between the, the inward man who I really am, who wants to obey God, and my flesh, my members who want to be angry, wants to be lustful, wants to be a liar, wants to be deceiving or manipulative, right? And then verse 24, oh, wretched man that I am, 
Paul's just being honest. He's like, man, there's this war going on inside of me. And boy, I am messed up. I'm so messed up from it. But I love this right here. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I am at war with myself. I am in bondage. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then verse 25 right here. Verse 20, sorry, yeah, verse 25. He gives the answer. I thank God. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So who will deliver me from this body of death? Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the one who delivers us from sin, from bondage, from what we talked about being slaves to sin. Now we can be slaves to righteousness. Amen. What's the answer? Jesus. Pursuing Jesus, loving Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus. It is through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that he's the one who delivers us from sin. Amen. He's the one who sets us free from sinful bondage. Amen. So meditate on that. Pray on that and recognize, man, there's this war inside of me. And Jesus is the one who has already won that war for me. I just need to have faith and trust in him and start following him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are the one who delivers us from this body of death. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I'm sure you guys were able to relate to Paul today in this internal struggle. So in the comment section, please put what was your takeaway? What did you get out of this chapter? You, when you guys comment on these videos, you guys encourage me so much. Also in our, in our um, description box, there's a link to our reading plan so you can follow along as we go through the book of Romans. Also, there's a link there if you guys want to give and become a generous supporter of Daily Hope. Thank you guys so much for your donations. And lastly, at Hope Community, people are our hearts. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for Romans chapter 8. 